It's the Andy Allen Show. Come with me, let's see what we might find. I'll be talking to people, having some fun, and whatever else comes to mind. I like playing guitar and hanging around with my kids in the summer twilight. I like firebirds and watching old John. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of The Andy Allen Show. Thank you so much for joining us. We have a great one for you today. Eminem Music is a locally owned music academy that was opened in 2021 by Michael Burnaby and Martina Caruso. They are located in Bethel Park and offer private lessons in piano, voice, guitar, bass, ukulele, trumpet, saxophone, oboe, flute, drums, and violin. In addition to Eminem Music, Michael and Martina also operate a branch of the Children's Music Academy for kids ages three to nine. Here they are in action, working their magic with the kids at the Children's Music Academy. Here we go. Children's Music Academy. Here we go. We're the Music Academy train. Choo choo. We're the Music Academy train. Choo choo. When we come to a mountain, we go up. When we come to a valley, we go down. What's this? I forget the name. Three eighths. It's three eighths. So the eighth note gets one beat. Say that with me. Eighth note gets one beat. So we go three eighth notes, three eighth notes, three eighth notes, quarter dot. Three eighth notes, three eighth notes, three eighth notes, quarter dot. If, if it has a three on top, it's a triplet. You're so right, Sam. You just call it a triplet out of nowhere. I love it. <laughs> I am thrilled to say that in studio with us today are Michael Burnaby and Martina Caruso, the owners and founders of Eminem Music. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks Thank for you. Having us. Yeah. So can you tell us how your wonderful academy came to be? Well, when everything uh, was uh, shut down a few years ago, mm -hmm. uh, almost four years ago now in 2020, um, you know, both of us are musicians and uh, we were trying to figure out how we were gonna you know, pull ourselves out of this mm -hmm. uh, uh, situation that we were all in. And it was actually Martina's mother my mother-in-law that uh, came to us with an idea of uh, how to maximize our skills as musicians uh, and uh, she said why don't you start a music academy <laughs> we, we didn't really know what to think of that but uh, she actually approached us first with uh, uh, m some materials online related to the Children's Music Academy mm. a franchise based in Denver uh, and uh, what that program is it's a it's a program like you said for three to nine yeah. um, where I like to describe it as a, as a full spectrum music education for kids uh, where kids are learning everything related to ear training, music theory, uh, even very <clears throat> basic composition uh, and they learn how to play with other kids on, in ensembles and play for uh, their peers as well. It's, uh, it's like a mommy and me course but a little bit more uh, involved. Uh, a parent attends with the child uh, and, uh, you know, we, we saw what the video promo uh, kind of described this class to be. And when we actually went out to Denver, we saw a class and we saw a bunch of five-year-olds going around the room one at a time playing right-hand melodies, left-hand chords, but also singing what they were playing in the right hand. They sang note letters, they sang words. Uh, and they did this all at the same time, both hands. They were all five years old, and each kid went around the room and did it. And me and Martina looked at each other like, what the, what's going on? <laughs> yeah. This is wild. And yeah. uh, we fell in love with the program very quickly, and we 
decided that we would build our foundation uh, for the Music Academy around this program. Uh, and once we did that, then we started to branch off and start offering private lessons in other instruments and have other teachers uh, teach their instruments of their specialty. Um, and that's, that's Eminem music. Eminem music is really the umbrella for everything. Uh, and we're Eminem music that provides private lessons, but we're also home to the Children's Music Academy curriculum. And yeah. that's how we started. What's your favorite thing about um, teaching a young person piano or teaching a young person uh, singing? And, and what's that like when you <clears throat> see them making a breakthrough? There's nothing more exciting than seeing someone get excited about something that I'm equally passionate about yeah. and seeing them make breakthroughs that you know you had a big hand in. Um, it, it's honestly the most exciting thing in the world to me. And I love it when I have a student that comes in. My role with my students is one for you, one for me. Like you can bring your Taylor Swift song in, we can totally sing that but you're also gonna learn this song that I'm giving you because I think it's gonna help you progress. Yeah. And and seeing them get excited about both, yeah. uh, to me, that's, you know, there's nothing better. Um, and I don't know if it's the same thing with, with piano. It but. is, it's, it's uh, piano, obviously there's a lot more mechanical technique that occurs. And the Children's Music Academy curriculum has certainly helped me in just certain aspects of, of education for piano and, and helping kids uh, learn things that they'll retain uh, more efficiently than they would with just traditional piano lessons. Yeah. Uh, and so I try to tie both of those things in together for private students. And, and again, yeah, when they when they uh, realize something or something clicks, um, it's it's very exciting. It's just uh, it's it's it 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 validates what I'm saying to them <laughs> as well because uh, I don't necessarily have an education background from college, but but in just performing for so many years and getting better at explaining how I do all this stuff to kids when they realize something that I know inherently it's uh, it's it's pretty it's pretty cool, it's cool yeah that must be amazing yeah recital it's, time and seeing them get in front of you know hundreds of people it's your which turn now. It's we your do turn to perform, right? I, you know we have we have hundreds of people that come to our recitals and the confidence they have like there's nothing better as a teacher than seeing them get up perform and be excited about it. Mm -hmm. um, oh my goodness, yeah, that must be it's so the best satisfying. Feeling. Yeah. When I sat in on that um, CMA class, I couldn't help but notice that you guys created such a fun atmosphere for the kids and it was so free, but you guys were able to maintain total control over the kids, which is so difficult to do because once you once the kids start having fun and the, the energy starts to ramp up, they, they get wild. Mm -hmm. um, I know that you worked as a substitute teacher and you were trained in ki in kindergarten through fifth. Yeah. Is that is are those skills and that experience is that why you guys are able to strike that balance so perfectly, or did you just have to like learn how to do that? I think it's a combo. So the way the curriculum is written is in really bite-sized pieces like where the kids are on the floor and then two minutes later we have them up dancing and then they're back at the piano and yeah. then they're up at the, the head of the piano and yeah. I think moving it quickly keeps them preoccupied um, but there is there is a certain element of you know I would say having an educational background and being able to reel them back in because if you know anything about Michael and my husband he's He's full of energy. You've probably seen it in the video. Yeah. Uh, he he's really good at getting them riled up, and I'm really good at, you know, bringing them back to the classroom and yeah. still keeping them excited. So I think the combination of both is is really what has made it successful in my eyes. That's such a great technique where they 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 start to get ramped up and but uh, yeah. they quickly you have to you, they they get they have to go sit back down or they have to come back up and they don't really have a chance to exactly. go down that one road. And that's why we part of why we fell in love with the curriculum beyond them being able to do stuff that I mean we didn't mention this before some of the ear training stuff these kids are doing at age 5 6 7 I didn't start during till college. Yeah. Um, so uh, just the combination of how the curriculum was written and you know it, it's it's amazing. It, it really is a great great program. One, two, three, two, three, four, three, four, five. Are you on your pinky? Mm -hmm. All right, back to the beginning. Right hand one. One, two, three, two, three, four, three, four, five. Left.
left hand thumb. One, two, three, two. Second ending. Go back to keyboards, give it a whirl. I liken it to a mix between like a kinder music, mm. uh, but with some Suzuki type of disciplines mm -hmm. uh, in music. So while they're having a ton of fun and they're really getting a chance to explore and uh, uh, in a, like a holistic type way, uh, they're also getting the tools. By, by the time they're eight, nine, 10 years old, uh, the goal is for them to have an entire foundation of music theory, being able to read the entire grand staff, uh, being able to play everything on the piano in all different keys, actually in all 12 keys. They'll learn mm -hmm. uh, how to play scales in all 12 keys, be able to read all the key signatures in all 12 keys, flats wow. and sharps and everything, uh, and have an entire uh, foundation of ear training as well, and to be able to hear things. And some of these kids might develop perfect pitch from the class itself and, and not even know it. That's the, kind of the, the, the driver of this curriculum. This, uh, this lady uh, in Denver, uh, Miss Jan Cross, uh, she's, uh, she's kind of like, uh, like the music teacher I had when I was a kid, just a very fun, warm lady, uh, a woman that, had, that created this curriculum over decades. She used to teach it in her basement 40 years ago and she's, uh, she's brought over 35, thousand kids through the curriculum all over the country. To roll um, off of that oh too, gosh. I mean what what we love about it is the kids that do go through the program and then kind of graduate, they have all the basis to start a private lesson through our m, &M studio. Yeah. Um, and then when their new teacher gets them, half the time the teachers come to us and they say, how do they know all this already? Like, right. yeah. you know, it, it, it's cool that they're already, they have the basis and they're ready to expand on their education in whatever musical instrument they choose. Yeah. Um, which I love. Yeah, we've looked at a lot of different programs that uh, provide music instruction for kids that young, but um, I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll promote this curriculum till the day we die. It's just I've <laughs> never seen anything like it. Now, I had similar instruction. I was a Suzuki kid when I was a kid, so I got very heavy ear training from six years old, you know, for many years, and so a lot of it was in inherent to me, but the way uh, this curriculum presents it, it also, uh, it also kind of requires the parent to be involved and reinforce those concepts at home. And it's uh, the, the, the phrase they use, it's a musical date with your child. And the uh, parent's learning too. It, you don't have to have any music yeah. background. So a lot of times the parents come up to us and they're like, thank you, like we're getting double education here because this is stuff that they never would have gotten as a kid. Right, so. it starts from ground zero yeah. for everyone, and it takes them all the way to the end. And and by that point, they can take any instrument they want, but knowing everything, now we think that piano is probably the, the best basis for all musical instruction. Uh, mm. It's very linear from left to right, so learning the piano first uh, is, in a lot of ways, the best, uh, <laughs> gives you the best opportunity to be able to branch off to a, any other instrument. Yep. Um, that's why we love it. That's exactly how it looked. It looked like a not only a great lesson, but <clears throat> a great outing for a parent yeah. and a child. Mm -hmm. It's like yeah, a really absolutely. nice evening that they were spending together. And then also the child is learning so much about music. C, F, C, F, E, F, G. Here we go. One, two, we're gonna sing the letters. One. Two, ready, go. C, F, C, F, B, e, F, G, D, G, D, G, D, G, F, B, e, F, left hand pinky. C, F, C, F, E, F, G. So you play piano and yes. you're a singer. Mm -hmm. How often do you guys um, perform outside of the academy, just the two of you, and what kind of gigs and venues do you play, or, or do you not do that? We do occasionally. <coughs> um, I will say Michael is more the gig guy right now. He uh, he gigs all over Pittsburgh, and I'll, I'll let him speak to that. Um, I've kind of taken a back seat and am doing more teaching than performing. But um, yeah. 
when we get a chance to perform together, you know, there's nothing more fun than being able to perform with your best friend. So yeah. we, we do some local stuff at libraries, um, old folks' homes, restaurants. Um, but like I said, Michael's Michael gets how many gigs a week are you doing right now? Uh, on a, in, a, in a good month, maybe 10 to 15 per yeah. month. Um, but uh, now, we've, obviously, we have a 10-month-old child, and, and uh, so we've both kind of taken somewhat of a back seat to, to be able to focus on that. And, and, uh, but I still do go out, and, and when the opportunity presents itself, to, to, uh, to take gigs around town. Um, usually, I'm with, uh, I'm with a bunch of different people up in the city, uh, mainly uh, Dwayne Dolphin, uh, Hugo Cruz, uh, James Johnson III, um, Reggie Watkins, the trombone player. Uh, and uh, perform all over town uh, at different places like Con Alma is the main jazz club in town across from Heinz Hall. I'm there at least once a month with somebody different all the time. Oh my uh, gosh, that's uh, incredible. There's, uh, tonight I'll be at Eddie V's. Uh, <laughs> Where's that? Eddie V's is a big seafood restaurant uh, on Grant Street uh, right in downtown. Uh, Kingfly Spirits is another popular one. Um, and, I love uh, it. Wow. I, love, we, I, love, all, I love the names of all these places. Yeah, King, they're, they're King really Fly cool. Spirits. That's, 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 Eddie that's, that's, that's in town. All that stuff in town. Uh, um, and I'll add, I mean, the fun thing about us <clears throat> when we do get to perform together is his background's jazz, my background's opera, and somehow we, we've been able to find rep that we both can kind of fuse the two together, yeah. right, which has been a lot of fun. Yes, yeah, so I'm, 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 uh, I'm good at improvising, but I've... Uh, uh, had to really, you know, get my reading chops and classical chops up to be able to do some of the stuff that, that she's used to doing. But we've yeah. also found some common ground in certain musical theater selections that kind of lend themselves to uh, yeah. jazz standards, uh, you know, especially Bernstein, Leonard Bernstein type of material. And, and uh, a lot of the selections that she has kind of uh, fit well into the kind of things that I like to play. Uh, well, Michael and Martina have graciously agreed to play a few songs for us today. Um, enjoy. Back to the 
Can you guys remember um, when you fell in love with music and what that music was? <clears throat> you want to start? <laughs> no, you go ahead. So I actually, uh, before I even started singing, I played piano for since I was five years old. Um, and then I did violin, I did saxophone, all of which I quit. Um, and I tell all my students to this day, I'm like, don't quit your piano lessons because they yeah. help tremendously. Um, for me, it actually wasn't until I think I was in fourth grade. Uh, I was in this like group musical. Um, I was a very shy, quiet kid growing up and they made each of us uh, audition for a solo. Mm -hmm. And I got up and I guess I sang really well. Mm -hmm. And uh, the teachers went to my parents and were like, your daughter can sing really well, like you should start our own lessons. And my parents were like, what? <laughs> they they didn't know? <laughs> they had no idea, no. <laughs> but for me, like sing, singing Elton John and Celine Dion in the car, like, yeah. you know, they didn't uh, know that. So um, it, I think for me, it was fourth grade when I really made that connection. And then g growing from there, falling in love with musical theater and then that growing into realizing I had more of a classical change voice and starting my private studies um, is where it really started to grow. But I would say fourth grade was when it started. I, and again, I wish, I wish at five I could have kept my dedication to piano, which yet another reason I love the CMA program. Yeah. Keeps them excited, it keeps them loving it. I had that one-on-one, -on -one, you know, the teacher with the roller hitting the hands, like it was, just wasn't for me. But yeah. I'm glad I was able to find my love back into it through singing, so. What was that, do you remember what that song was, the, the solo? Oh my did? gosh, uh, it was called Every Bed and Has Music Inside. Um, I actually remember the whole solo itself, um, but the whole musical itself, it was like self-created by the school, was okay. about loving music, um, which is kind of fun and exciting because yeah. that's exactly mm. what it did for me. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Uh, my parents tell me the story that I was four or five years old and we came home from church and uh, they heard me on like one of my little toy piano xylophone things trying to make out one of the songs that I remembered from the mass. Uh, I don't remember what it was, but they specifically tell me that's what kind of got them the idea of maybe I should try, they should try giving me a, getting me a piano lesson or something. So they found Suzuki and Suzuki's a small group of kids that, that uh, uh, do a bunch of ear training type things and learn songs by ear, mm -hmm. most specifically uh, for the piano. And uh, so I started piano lessons very young and, um, you know, whether I wanted to practice or not, my parents kind of made me stick with it for a long time. And, and uh, then when I was in sixth grade, I went and auditioned. Wait, so there, you, there were times where you didn't want to keep going? They made you stick I with don't it? Know, I don't know if there was a time where I wanted to stop. Um, maybe I did. I, I don't remember when I was so young, but I... I I do remember being interested in, in classical music and other things. My dad's a musician as well. He's a, okay. he's a bass player, a uh, great uh, electric bass player. And uh, so I grew up with a lot of these uh, different influences. I mean, I, in the house, we were, he was always playing uh, Earth, Wind and & Fire and Steely oh. Dan and Sting and the Doobie Brothers and Deep Purple and, and Queen and Led Zeppelin. Queen was my first <laughs> favorite band, even Metallica was in the house and uh, uh, I remember my dad would be in the basement playing the drums blasting Metallica and trying to play along with it um, and wow. then in sixth grade 
they they wanted to they they wanted to see where I would fit within a choral setting. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was we were already in a in a community choir in the area, um, but they took me to the American Boy Choir, which was a, a world renowned. Uh, uh, choir, boy choir that was based in our backyard. I was from from New Jersey, Prin uh, Trenton, Hamilton, New Jersey, and the American Boy Choir was based in Princeton, kind of like the Vienna Boy Choir, if you ever heard of them, but for America. So I went and auditioned, and they were they were just doing it for the heck of it, and I kind of came out and was just like, hey, I think I want to go here, <laughs> and I got yeah. accepted. And for seventh and eighth grade, I left my grade school to go there, and it's it's only a four to eight school. But it was a um, a boy choir that was a boarding school, and we toured the world. We sang at Carnegie Hall and Lincoln Center and played with the New York Philharmonic, and I went to Japan when I was 12 years old and did a tour of the whole country uh, as just this 12-year-old kid not really knowing any better, oh but it was, it was a lot of fun, so it gave me a lot of... And you're coming in at the very end. These kids have been there fourth, fifth, some or sixth. Some of them, but I mean, we all came in at different times, but some of us came in at seventh grade. A group came in at sixth grade, and some of them came as early as fifth or fourth grade. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I, you know, some of the most formidable two years of my life, and uh, it really gave me the sense of like, you know what, this is this is something I'm going to continue for the rest of my life. And yeah. and uh, certainly going to high school, it was it was it wasn't the same. It was like, wow, mm -hmm. I've done all this wild stuff as a you know 11, 12 year old, and you know now I'm just going to my 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 normal high school that I would have gone to all along. Yeah. Uh, but I knew early on that I was going to go to school for music and that I was going to do this for the rest of my life in some capacity. Um, but it wasn't until I went to, started auditioning for college that I would uh, um, start maybe learning jazz. And my piano teacher at the time, who I still keep in touch with today, he's a great friend, Mr. Bob Ross. Uh, about sophomore, junior year of high school, he started preparing me to learn some jazz stuff along with all the classical stuff I was already playing. Uh, and I quickly from there... He gave and, then me, he, and then he was your college teacher. Well, he didn't teach me throughout college. I <laughs> went to college and studied from college uh, teachers there, but I still okay. kept in touch with him and I was still learning from him on the side and through the summers I would go back and, and study with him. Uh, and, uh, and I still talk to him today and he still gives me all uh, all these different concepts that I that I would not otherwise know, and he gave me the foundation for learning how to play jazz and and for the love of jazz that I started to discover more once I came to Pittsburgh here um, at Duquesne University, and that's my whole connection to Pittsburgh in the first place. So that's my uh, wow, that's my whole musical journey. <laughs> how lucky you were to find a mentor like that. Very today. much so. Yes, and, uh, he was. Uh, that's integral. Now you're now you're doing that. I, I am, and, and he's a wonderful teacher. And now he's given me ideas uh, and concepts on how to how to teach kids as well, too. So, um, yeah, that's my journey to here. I never thought I'd be in Pittsburgh, but I moved to Pittsburgh now and met my future wife, and, Captain Mir. And, 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 yeah, Captain and, Mir. And her entire family is based here, so uh, I'm stuck here now, <laughs> in a good way, in a good way. So Whoa. that's it. We're happy to have you. Thank you. <laughs> Um, do you guys want to play another song? Sure. Sure. Yeah. Let's go. I could find the whole meaning of life in those sad eyes. They've seen things that you never quite say but I hear come out of hiding I'm right here beside you and I'll stay there as long as you let me because you
It's addictive the minute you let yourself think The things that I say just might matter to someone All of this time I've been keeping my mind on the running away And for the first time I think I'd consider the stay show to bring you this exciting game show, Erie or Pacific. Let's meet our contestants for today. Sir, what's your name? Michael. Michael, nice to meet you. As well. Ma'am, what's your name? Martina. Martina, wow. Um, where are you from? Pittsburgh, PA. Okay. Pittsburgh, PA as well. Both from Pittsburgh, PA. And what do you do? Own a music school. I also own a music school. Okay, fantastic. I'm going to explain to you how to play Erie or Pacific. We're going to show you a picture, and you're going to tell us, are you looking at a picture of Lake Erie, one of the five Great Lakes, or are you looking at a picture of the Pacific Ocean, the largest and deepest body of water on this splendid blue planet? We're going to show you five pictures in total, and if you answer four or more correctly, you will win the following sensational prize. Dave, show them what they're playing for today. Actually, wait, wait. Before we show that today's prize, I just want to announce to everyone at home that uh, a little birdie just told me that Michael and Martina became the proud parents of an exquisitely precious baby boy. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're so welcome. I have two little tykes of my own, and I just want to say that um, one of my favorite things about having little kids is dressing them in shirts that feature absurd combinations of different things. Great white sharks playing volleyball, raccoons <laughs> water skiing, <laughs> polar bears flying kites with sunglasses on. It's completely ridiculous. <laughs> um, they basically take two awesome things and just jam them together. So in the spirit of that delightful lunacy, today you will be playing for a onesie that features a triceratops riding a skateboard. <laughs> Triceratops, awesome. Skateboarding, maybe more awesome than Triceratops. <laughs> Slam them together, you have a killer onesie for a child. Are you guys ready to play Erie or Pacific? Yes. Let's okay. Yeah. Let's see the first picture, Dave. I see vast water. 
G gorgeous sunlight breaking through the clouds. Could go either way. Mm. What are you guys thinking? You're your Pacific. I'm going to say, because the sun is setting on that side, it's the Pacific. So I would have said too, Pacific. Wow. <laughs> Dave. Is it Erie or Pacific? It is the Pacific Ocean. You guys are on the board with one. Right. Fantastic. We got four more to go, and the onesie is yours. <laughs> Let's see picture number two. Wow, this one's at night. This one's harder mm. to uh, determine. Again, just no shore in sight. Are we looking at Lake Erie or the Pacific Ocean? I'll let you. I'm going to say Erie. Martina, are you locking that in? Lake Erie? I'll go with Erie, yes. Dave, is it Erie? It is Erie! <laughs> we, are, we are rocketing toward this onesie. My goodness. All right, now it's going to get hard. Okay. Third picture, please. This one's nearly impossible to determine. <laughs> I've seen this kind of behavior at both. Really? Hmm. Erie or Pacific? I just can't imagine waves to be that large Erie, on Lake Erie, right? so I'm gonna say the Pacific. Pacific. Uh, Pacific. You guys Specifically the Pacific. <laughs> Specifically the Pacific, okay. Let's see. Dave, is it Erie or Pacific? Are they right? It is the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> we are at three oh, now. Boy. One more, and you've got the one. <laughs> the Triceratops on the skateboard is within reach. Okay, we see a fish. <laughs> uh, there's no person in the photo, so we don't know how large this fish is. <laughs> um, it's, it's anybody's guess, Erie or Pacific. Can't imagine sharks in Lake Erie, so I'm gonna say the Pacific. Pacific. Is it Pacific? Mm. <laughs> it is the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> we, we're we're at four. Should we just go for five? Let's go. Okay. Five for five. For gits and shiggles. Okay. <laughs> 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 we see the water. The water is. In this case, we see a shoreline that could be a marina. That could be. I we. There's really no I telling. I think it's specifically Lake Erie. Lake You're going to go with Erie. Erie for sure, so. yeah. Eerily Erie. Is it Erie? <laughs> it is Erie. You guys swept aboard five for five. The onesie is yours. Thank you so much for coming in and playing today. I love that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Whenever I was at the um, the CMA uh, lesson, you guys were telling me that you wanted to have public performances under the umbrella of M&M. Mm -hmm. What what might that look like, and where would where would those venues be? That, <laughs> <laughs> that was in, almost in so harmony. There, <laughs> I'll take this one. Uh, beyond, we offer two recitals a year, so we have kind of our winter recital and our spring recital. Um, but what we would love to do is start to create maybe like certain theme nights uh, where we go to places like, you know, local restaurants or um, old folks' homes where they sing all songs about love or all songs about. Disney. Um, yeah. and, and it would be kids from the recitals. Yeah. It would be, it would be, I we can implement our teachers, I'm, but yeah, also a mix of our teachers. call up our kids to, to sing and, and show what they're able to do yeah. um, and create, you know, kind of de these different themed performances. So it hasn't happened yet, but that's kind of our, our next school in terms of the private lesson mm -hmm. section because a lot of times kids, they want to perform, but and they're getting it in their schools, but maybe, you know, on the vocal side, they audition for their musical and don't get the lead role. And yeah. uh, for me, I, I'll, I'll say this out front, like, I, I studied opera at Carnegie Mellon. I never got a single lead role in my high school musicals. Um, and a lot of times I can eat at you, but yeah. I never gave up and I got auditions at schools like Juilliard and, you know, Manhattan School of Music, and yep. um, so I want to keep that passion going for them and give them the opportunity to perform whenever and wherever we can allow that. 
That's we right. also give them. Uh, we also offer options to make recordings as well. Mm -hmm. So a song mm -hmm. that they're working on, uh, we've done a few of those recordings already, uh, where sometimes Martina will join in and they'll do a duet. Uh, I'll play some of the arrangements and and uh, uh, put it into a recording software and, and kind of show them the process. Like in a studio to, setting? In a studio, or you're yeah, about like we have a space in the music school uh, where you know we have we have a full recording setup uh, to give them the opportunity to put something down and put it on YouTube and share it with their friends See and family. And, and uh, so outside of now, we haven't had live performance opportunities yet, but we have. Um, We've had had several recording opportunities That's incredible. Uh, occur so far, so we're trying to expand on that as well. Yeah, that would be a great thing for kids, like like you described, not getting a role in a high school musical, but having places around town to yeah. perform. Mm -hmm. And, and would, instilling in them that that, in. that doesn't mean that they're not good enough, or yeah. you know maybe they weren't right for that role, but yeah. you can really crush this song. So let's go out and sing this song yeah. in public. Yeah. Um, and, and build their confidence and help them continue to grow in their progression, I think is, is really important. Mm. Thank you guys so much for coming in and being interviewed. You have an incredible academy. Um, thank you for sharing your music with us here today. Um, I just want to share this quote um, that I found. I was looking up quotes about the power of music, and this one really stood out to me. This is from Aldous Huxley, pretty smart guy. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, after silence, that which comes nearest to expressing the inexpressible is music. Huh. Thanks so much for joining us. See you next time.